Well, howdy, everybody. All right, so in this last week in the Prove 4.4 .4, uh, with storage spaces, we ran into some issues with VirtualBox and the way that it is passing along the disk information to the Windows Virtual Server. So I was going to demonstrate what the issue is and what the solution is for anybody who's uh, wanting to go through the process to be able to see what it successfully looks like, uh, to, what it looks like to successfully create those storage pools. Again, we excused the assignment, we gave everybody full points because uh, some folks were spending hours on this trying to get it going and it just couldn't work. So uh, feel free to reach out if you have questions about this. But I'm, what I'm going to do first is open up VirtualBox. I'm going to go to the settings. You notice here I have my storage controller, which is set for SATA, S-A-T-A. And I have my primary drive and then an empty op optical drive. So what we want to do is come here and we want to click add. And I've already got three that are pre-done. Pre if I didn't have any here, I could click on create, create a virtual uh, disk image. Uh, just accept the defaults here, go to next, change this to 10 gigabytes, rename it if I want, and then click finish. But I've already done that three times. And so what I'll do here is I will double click that. It attaches it to that um, to that controller. Then I can say attach the second one and then attach the third one. If I click OK and I go back into settings and I go to storage, you can see the three that I attached. If I go to hard disk here, you can see now that they are all attached to it. The disk one, two, and three, which are 10 gigabytes each. What I'm going to do now is start the virtual server and it is going to power up. It's going to take it a few seconds. And what I'm going to be doing is I will drag over my virtual machine here so you can see it powering up. Um, it's going to power up and then it's going to come to the server manager uh, administrative portal. And we're going to look at storage pools as soon as I log in. And once I log in, it's going to pop up and give me the administrative window. And from there is where I'm going to show you where the error is showing up in the storage pools. So the server manager pops up here. We wait a few more seconds and we'll see down here uh, the item for storage. It just takes a few seconds. And then we have file and storage services. <clears throat> if we go to disks, you can see the disks are listed there. There's a online gig, uh, 10 gigs, 10 gigs, 10 gigs, and then my primary drive of 40 gigs. If I go to storage pools, you notice it says no storage pool exists. Uh, so it's not seeing any of those physical drives. Even if I go into here and I go to disk management, and I can see that these three disks are showing up. And they are online unallocated disks, but the system is not seeing them when I go to storage pools. What I should see here is a primordial storage pool and the three disks listed here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to shut down this machine. And I want to shut it down anyways. And what's going to happen now is I'm going to be back to settings. And I'm going to go to storage. And I'm going to detach these. So I'm going to highlight each one and right click and choose remove attachment. Remove the attachment. Then what I want to do is add a new storage controller. And that's done down here, the little green plus sign. I'm going to add a controller. What I have found works is the LSI Logic SAS, SAS. Click that. We can leave the name as whatever we want. We can increase the port count to five. And then click OK. Unfortunately, we have to go in and out of settings multiple times. And then you can see that the storage controller right here, the LSI, I want to right click on it and choose Add a Hard Disk. And then I'm going to go through that process again of selecting those three drives. 
So that way they are all attached. If I click OK and then go back into Settings, go to Storage, I can now see that those three are attached to the LSI controller. If I go to Add, I can see that they're properly attached. Then I'm going to click OK and start that virtual machine again. And while we're waiting for this to start up, you can, you can see why we just excuse the assignment rather than having everyone go through this process, which should work right out of the gate, but or it, it just should work, but it is not. And rather than having to you do a workaround, which can be confusing, we just decided to excuse it. But I wanted to create this video so you can get a feel for what it looks like when it's successful and what we had to do in VirtualBox to get it to work properly. So it's going to pop up here in just a few seconds. As soon as we see the storage item here, we'll click on it. So file is storage. If I go to disks, you can see those disks are there, 10 gigs each. If I go to storage pool, now you can see that we have a primordial storage pool and the three physical disks are there. And from there, I can create a new storage pool if I want and go through those steps to be able to create that storage pool. So I'm going to cancel the wizard on that one. But yeah, I can go through here. I can create a test storage pool. I'm going to use the pri that primordial pool. I can select those three drives, click Next, and then create it. Uh, hopefully that helps. Again, you don't have to go through this process, but I wanted to put this video out there so you could get an idea for what it looks like when it's successful and to explain what was happening with VirtualBox. Sorry about all the confusion on that, and um, sometimes we just run into these bugs and we have to make our way through it. So feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Thank you so much. Take care.